Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I've taken a look at the Ensemble Studio and Special Maps in the past, and in this video we'll complete the set by looking at the real world maps. If you haven't tried them before, there's nothing to download, you just go into your map selection and change the map style from standard to real world. I find they're good for some chill unranked games, but you really don't see them played too often online. I'm not really sure why, I think they're a fun way to mix things up. A quick thing to know about them is that their sizes and start locations are preset and designed for 3 vs 3 or 4 vs 4, so it doesn't matter which size you set in the lobby. That said, the distribution of extra resources and which starting location you get is random, so you have a slightly different experience every time you play. Now there are 28 of them, so going through them one by one I thought might get a bit tedious, and instead I've gone through them and boiled it down to what I think are the top 10. Seeing as a big appeal of real world maps, scenarios, and campaigns is the historical immersive role playing aspect, I gave a bit more weight to maps that have a lot of civilizations from those regions available. That said, I'm immediately going to break that rule with number 10, Texas. The original description for this map was relive the classic Mayan and Korean skirmish over the Lone Star State, so you get a sense of how seriously they took this map. For me it was a toss up between this one and Australia as both are pretty similar in their design. The major difference between them is that Australia is a giant size map and Texas is large, which may be the first example I've come across where things aren't bigger in Texas. Personally I just like the concept that Texas would decide to leave the US and then physically leave the US to be its own island nation in the middle of the Atlantic. Outside of that it's a pretty standard map with some fishing and a bit closer than usual starting locations. Moving on, my number 9 is Indochina. I think there's some potential for a Rise of the Rajas theme match on this one, and the defining feature here is a maze of jungles in the east and more open plains in the west. There's some potential for imbalance on a 4 vs 4, as it seems one team always has two players in the west location, so not much of a fish boom, but they're partly compensated with more space to build. The map is pretty low on extra stone and gold piles, which right away holds it back a bit for me. Next up at number 8 is Siberia. As you'd expect, it looks pretty cold on most of the map, and there's lots of open space to expand into. But what makes it notable for me is the islands in the Arctic Ocean are quite rich with resources. That makes them much more interesting to fight over and adds some long-term importance to water control as well as on land. It's also nicely balanced with a northern team and southern team, and plenty of extra stone and gold piles to get you going. Some might say the most classic blunder is to fight a land war in Asia, but if you like large maps, I think this one's well designed and worth checking out. Next up in number 7 is France. I wanted to pick just one out of the Britain France Iberia set, though all of them are classic real world maps from Age of Conquerors. Personally I think Britain has a lack of building space and almost everything you build is annoyingly in range of the coast, while Iberia has a lot of emphasis on water and rivers to control. There's nothing necessarily wrong with coastal raiding, but at the end of the day land maps are much more popular, which is why I think France has the most appeal, with far less water than the other two. It also has the wild card of one player in Britain, who I think can play an interesting role. They can either go exclusively for water control early on, they can boom on their island, or they can try to go to the mainland with their second and third town centers. Overall it's just a fun land map with lots of historically relevant civilizations to choose from if you want a western European themed game. Moving on to number 6 we have Mid East. For me this one checks a lot of boxes. You have a good amount of building space, access to a bit but not too much water, good symmetry in starting locations, and a generous amount of resources around your town center. In fact it's close to double the normal amount of stone and gold. Aside from that it has a similar feeling to Arabia, which makes sense since it's literally Arabia, but with a bit of water thrown in there as well and some choke points. In fact the only real knock I have against it is those choke points can make for some awkward trade routes. To compensate, each team also has access to a long stretch of water, making trade cogs a possibility as well. It's just a solid map overall, barely landing outside of the top 5. Entering the top 5 though, we have West Africa. Up front, this one might not be for everyone and is unusual for being the maximum possible map size. Combined with the fact it's almost all land, this map just feels massive. At the same time, I think that's appropriate, as Africa is much larger than a lot of people think. It's really undersold by the standard Mercator projection that you see on most maps, which distorts the size of land near the poles, so I like that it's fighting a common misconception there. For example, on most maps it looks like Greenland is comparable in size to Africa with Mercator projection, but if you compare the actual size without distortion, Africa is enormous, one might even say ludicrous sized in comparison. The map is also correspondingly generous with extra stone, gold, and relics. This one can easily turn into a 2 hour game or more, and you always have to be a little careful with ludicrous sized maps and lag. 
At the same time, if that sort of game appeals to you, then this one's a great option. Thanks to the African Kingdom expansion, you also have quite a bit of choice with geographically relevant civilizations, if you like to play with that sort of constraint. At number 4, we have China. Now this is another quite large map, but not quite as big or open in comparison. A major feature is that there are a number of rivers cutting through the map that have just a handful of crossings. The result is you have a lot of space to build, but fighting tends to concentrate in just a few specific places. Unlike some of the maps we've seen so far, this one leads to more or less standard feeling games, and is probably the safest pick for people on the fence about real world maps in general. If you're feeling a bit more adventurous, there's also a China diplomacy map on the workshop if you want a similar concept but a migration start and higher resources. Those again do have the potential to turn into really long games, which I know isn't for everyone, but certainly have a following. Entering the top 3, we have Central America. Now right away, there are some pretty obvious weaknesses for this one. First of all, about half of the map is taken up by water, giving you a shortage of building space. The water also offers little to no extra resources on its islands, so there isn't an immediate reward for controlling it. It's also just a large map size, which is the smallest for real world, making space issues even more obvious. So why do I rate it top 3? Well, for me, it's because it works so well for themed games. For example, where everyone has to pick an American Civ or Spanish, and the ease that you can turn it into basically a multiplayer version of the Montezuma campaign. Having a bit smaller map also allows it to work better with fewer players, like in a 2 vs 2. Again, with the historical element being a major appeal for real world maps, and the contrast in civilizations you can choose from, I think this one offers a lot of ways to play with that theme. Moving on now to number 2 is Italy. I used to not be a huge fan of this one, but it's been modified in some pretty major ways. If you tried it back in Age of Conquerors, you'll know that everyone started outside of Italy itself, and it was sort of a land grab for the middle, colonization type of map. In Definitive Edition, it's been updated, and now you start with a player in Rome, lots of resources in Italy to fight over, and they've opened it up by connecting Sicily and allowing players to cross the Alps in the north. I think that makes the map more competitive for the middle, which greatly improves the experience. Now I am a bit of a Roman Empire geek, so maybe that's influencing things here, but I've played it a few times online and every one of those has been a great game, with a lot happening on both water and land. If you tried it before and didn't like it back in the day, I still highly recommend trying it after the changes. Finally, before we get to number 1, I have a single honourable mention of a map that really should be included but isn't, and that's a Western Europe map of some kind. There are quite a few variations of that concept on the mod workshop, but there's nothing official built into the game. With so many civilizations included from Western Europe, it seems like a pretty obvious oversight. But with that, the number one real world map, in my opinion, is Earth. I wouldn't say it's the best version of Earth out there if you include ones on the workshop, but it doesn't require downloading anything, and is unique on the list for having a migration start from one of the two poles, which adds a lot of replayability. I like they even got the flat Earth aspect correct, take that science. What makes it so fun is you might be lucky and get the entire Western Hemisphere to yourself and have a laugher of a game, or maybe you end up fighting over Africa with four other players under constant pressure. You can even add a rule that everyone needs to start in their civilization's actual geographical location, which adds another dimension of strategy to picking your sieve. So those are my favourite real world maps. I'd be curious to hear about your favourites and if I overlooked a good one. Shout out to Dale, Sean Paul, Samantha, Drew, Brian, Gabe, Joseph, Noah, Paul, and Heliosan, as well as everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.